The Liberal government is introducing new changes to its gun bill, backing away from controversial attempts to ban a long list of firearms, which would have included some common hunting rifles. All those guns are now untouched, and some gun control advocates are calling this latest plan a betrayal. It is another betrayal of all the victims of mass shootings since Polytechnic. Proposing a new definition of assault style firearms that would be banned, but the ban will only apply to guns manufactured after the bill is passed. The Minister of Public Safety is defending those changes. A future government will not be able to de declassify or lower the classification through regulatory instruments like an order in council. That provision is in the law. That was an idea that came from Pauli Sousouvienne, as did the idea around large capacity magazines, as did the idea of putting forward a technical definition. This shows that we are listening. Nathalie Provo is a survivor of the Polytechnique shooting and a gun control activist. Ms. Provo, thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon. Your colleague and friend Heidi Rathjen uh, called this a betrayal yesterday. Do you share that opinion? Sure, Lee. Um, Polytechnique uh, survivors, uh, fami vict uh, family of victims, students, teachers, all the community of Polytechnique requested a total ban and permanent ban on assault style weapon in 1990. So even if there's some good aspect with Bill C-21, uh, 33 years after the massacre, we were expecting a real and complete solution. And that's not what has been uh, tabled by uh, Marco Mendicino yesterday. In November, when they went down a path that you were comfortable with, with the long list of banned guns, Liberals from the Prime Minister on down told us this was necessary to ban these weapons to keep the country safe. And now many of those weapons, if not most of those weapons, will be completely unaffected by this. So what do you feel is at stake if these weapons are still accessible? It's very dangerous for Canadians. We, we are not stopping uh, those, those firearms to come into the market. So you know that I'd say it to every Canadian the market is increasing uh, and it's not stoppable. So if we want to remove assault style weapon from our streets, we have to be to to create a strong definition and we it, it has to uh, include all assault style weapon. We understood uh, with what was table in November that there we, we need to be careful uh, to remove some and, and it's only a few models that need to be removed because they are meant for hunting. But we have to have a strong definition that remove from our streets every assault style weapon. If there's loopholes, manufacturers will be able to put new guns on the market. And if there's loopholes, people who want them will be able either to keep what they have in their hands, or to buy new ones, or even to give those who are banned to buy new ones that aren't, but are of the same capacity. Uh, so if we need, if, if we want to invest to remove assault style weapon from our streets, we need to have a strong definition and we need to integrate all the models and not give it to a committee that won't uh, be able to make a decision quickly just to create the last uh, advisory committee on firearms on which I was. It took six months. Right. So it's very long just to create it, to find people who are available. And then you have to find a date and you have to find a president so long. We Canadians don't need that. We need to get rid of it now because each year, when we, quand on a chaque année où on attend, so each year when we are waiting to do something, there's more and more on the market. It's tougher and tougher to get rid of it. So we have to do it now. Well, one of the things the minister said yesterday, Minister Medicino, is that they, he says they added provisions to the new amendment based on ideas from Pauli Souvien. For example, add, adding large capacity magazines and putting in a technical definition. He says that is proof that they are listening to you. Do you think they're listening? Oh, we understood that he listened to us. But the first re request 
from students, from professors, from all the community of Polytechnic. And I was there in January 1990. Go back to your uh, archives. You will find it. We were there. And what we request, re requested was a total ban, a permanent ban on assault style weapon. So I cannot accept now less than what we requested 33 years ago. That's why, and I understand that he's trying, but I cannot step back now. Your, your group had very- you No, know? no, I understand. You, uh, go, go ahead, go ahead, finish your point. It's still alive in my memory what happened that day. I know how awful and how dramatic can, these weapons can do to Canadians. That's what happened some years ago in Porta Pique. And we never know when it will happen again. We have to remove those weapons from our streets. It will help police officers to capture those illegal ones, illegal ones. It will help because there will be less tension and less guns in circulation. I'm sure it will improve our safety. We have to do it now, but if we're not doing it completely now, we will never be able to do it in two, three, five years. There's it a, will be too much. It will be too late. There's a vigil every year in December to commemorate uh, the, the shooting, and politicians go to that. Will the Liberal government be welcome at the vigil this year? We haven't talked with all our teams from uh, the, 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 with all the, 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 the family of victims. From a personal point of view, I will never uh, I, I will never talk to Mr. Trudeau at this ceremony again. That's crazy. He went so many times to cry with us. I have so many pricked pictures of myself with him. Even in 2014, he was just chief of the Liberal Party. So we need to uh, we he need to understand that it's a complete betrayal of his word. Natalie Provo, thank you so much for your time. The pleasure. Thank you. Okay, we're going to bring in another guest now on this issue. Mark Rickman is the manager of the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. Mark, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me again. I, I know you were concerned with the initial plan by the Liberal government that a lot of popular hunting brands of rifles would be affected by this. What, what's your reaction to this change that they've rolled out uh, yesterday? Uh, sure. Um, so to be clear, I haven't seen the exact wording of all of the amendments that were supposed to be tabled at the Standing Committee today. So my responses are based solely on the minister's sure. um, uh, announcement. And uh, my understanding is that the bureaucrats are meeting uh, at the Standing Committee right now, probably providing some clarity on some of the questions that we have. But uh, you know, here we go again, right? Um, uh, it's a mixed bag, as as most um, uh, political moves are. Uh, there's some some good some good uh, moves in there. We're we're very happy to see uh, the reconstitution of the Canadian Firearms Advisory Committee. That was a recommendation, one of the eight recommendations that the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters made in our letter to uh, Minister Mendicino back in December. Um, it is it, we don't necessarily advocate um, for things like ghost guns, but it is nice to see that. Um, uh, that provision has has returned um, to these amendments. That was something that was um, sort of a, a casualty, if you will, uh, um, of the, uh, the, with, the, with the withdrawal of the uh, previous amendments. So um, we, we have quite a few concerns um, uh, remaining, and uh, some of them might be answered by uh, additional clarity from RCMP and the Canadian Firearms Program. What, what would be your biggest concern that's left, Mark? What would be your biggest concern here? Because if the list of the hunting guns went away, what, what's the big thing that's left over? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So, I mean, um, first of all, we have to we have to buy into the belief that um, that model based firearms bans are going to dramatically improve public safety, and, and there's very little evidence to to support that prediction. So, 
You're right in that the uh, Amendment G46, which was the list, um, mm -hmm. as many people call it, has been uh, withdrawn. Um, and But they have also reintroduced the, they're not calling it an evergreen definition anymore. They're now calling it a, a technical definition, uh, the expansion of the definition of a prohibited firearm. Um, and there is slightly altered wording in um, in what they have reintroduced. Um, so it's going to take some time to determine the the exact impact of those few altered words um, with respect to uh, you know being originally designed right. um, with a detachable cartridge magazine versus designed to accept a detachable magazine. Um, uh, so my understanding from speaking with uh, folks like uh, public safety um, is that that is largely going to be the work of CFAC, of the advisory committee, to go over the list of the 480 some odd models of firearms that had been added to the proposed amendment G46 that have since been withdrawn um, and go over them and determine whether or not, um, you know, there are some existing uses that suggest that maybe these this particular model or that particular model should not be prohibited because um, the government can't do that when uh, with respect to uh, guns that are reasonably used for hunting purposes. So that's our understanding and that is, um, uh, essentially going to be an onerous task for mm -hmm. uh for the advisory committee there um but it does it does suggest one thing that the, the the minister is willing to listen they they listened to the concerns uh they did withdraw the amendments we have seen some alterations to the wording uh some new additions to to these amendments that weren't in the previous amendments um so it it does uh demonstrate that minister Mendicino um did hear loud and clear that there were concerns um, at the very least, he is willing to uh, pump the brakes a little bit and uh, engage stakeholders from across um, from across Canada, folks that are involved in firearms policy, um, in a debate and a, and a constructive discussion about which guns um, should or should not be prohibited. The the thing that struck me about the amendment yesterday was that they gave the technical definition, as you call it, of of the type of gun that would be banned, and they're drawing heavily on the findings of the Mass Casualty Commission in Nova Scotia to to come up with that definition. But then they say that this definition, once put into the criminal code, will only affect weapons designed and sold after it comes into law. So for the weapons that are out there now, that were the subject of such significant controversy when this list appeared in November. My understanding is that those would be safe from ban, that, that hunters who have these weapons will be allowed to keep them and allowed to keep using them. Is that how you see it, that this is a ban for future guns rather than uh, current inventories? Right. So as it stands right now, there's a bit of a Swiss cheese model here with uh, what's prohibited and what isn't. So we have all of the uh, the nine families, the roughly 1,500 models that were prohibited the assault um, style weapons May 2020. You're about. Yeah, the assault style, as the government yeah. calls them. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So back in May 2020, uh, through order in Cal, so those remain prohibited to this day. Um, when they uh, realized that they didn't quite capture all of the assault style firearms that they wanted to prohibit, they altered the criteria for selecting those firearms. They dropped the requirement for a modern design and large volumes in the Canadian market. So that, as a result, would have captured things like the SKS. And that's why you saw the SKS in Amendment G46, but not in the May 2020 OIC. Right, and that's a so, very popular hunting rifle that's used in particular in the North and by Indigenous hunters, and that will not now be banned with these changes. As of right now, no. But to be honest, that is probably the discussion that CFAC is going to have. They are going to look at those additional 480 some odd models that hadn't been captured by the May 2020 OIC, but would have been captured by Amendment G4 and G46 after they dropped those two criteria. So now there's an opportunity at the very least, if the government is willing to listen, to engage stakeholders um, in an honest debate about the existing uses of some of these firearms. And we have an opportunity to speak directly to the minister and um, hopefully with open ears and uh, essentially plead our case and demonstrate why a lot of these firearms, perhaps all of them, um, do not deserve to be prohibited. It, it's interesting, as uh, Natalie Provo, who we spoke to right before you, you can hear the anger and the hurt and the betrayal she is feeling. And there's still severe doubt and skepticism, it seems, coming from you. It, it feels like they've landed in a position that doesn't really kind of satisfy anybody, but at least gives you a process maybe that you can have a that 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 maybe they should have tried 
before going with that list back in November. That's the key point right yeah. there, David. And I think a lot of this work, a lot of the content of the announcement yesterday is probably stuff that should have been done even leading up to May 2020 in the Ordering Council. The, the deliberate and the constructive consultation with Canadians across the country, all stakeholder groups, Indigenous peoples, all of that should have been happening uh, on an ongoing basis well before any decisions like that were made. Okay, Mark Rickman, always appreciate your time and, and insight. That's Mark Rickman, the manager of the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. Thanks, sir. Thank you.